Have you ever wondered why electrical wires come in so many different sizes? From thick cables running to your home's electrical panel to the thin wires inside your phone charger, wire size isn't just about physical strength. It's deeply tied to how electric current flows. In today's video, we're diving into how electric current affects wire size and why using the right wire is absolutely critical, not just for efficiency, but for safety, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. Electric current is the flow of electrons through a conductor, typically a metal like copper or aluminum. This flow is measured in amperes or amps. Now, every conductor has resistance, which means it naturally resists the flow of electricity. When current passes through a wire, some of the electrical energy is lost as heat due to this resistance. This is where wire size becomes so important. A thinner wire has more resistance compared to a thicker one. So when the same amount of current flows through a thin wire, it heats up more, and that heat can be dangerous. It could melt the wire insulation, damage nearby materials, or even start a fire. The size of a wire is usually measured by its gauge. In the American Wire Gauge System, or AWG, a lower number means a thicker wire. For instance, a 10-gauge wire is thicker than a 14-gauge wire. The thicker the wire, the lower its resistance and the more current it can safely carry. So when electricians or engineers choose a wire for a certain application, they always consider how much current will pass through it. If they expect a high current, they'll use a thicker wire to minimize resistance and prevent overheating. Here's a good way to visualize this. Imagine water flowing through a pipe. If the pipe is narrow and you try to push a lot of water through it quickly, the pressure increases and the pipe might burst. Similarly, if you try to pass a lot of electric current through a thin wire, the electrical pressure or heat builds up. This can cause the wire to overheat and the insulation around it might start to degrade. That's why code and standards exist to guide us in selecting the proper wire gauge for specific current ratings. For example, in residential wiring in the U.S., a 14-gauge wire is commonly used for 15-amp circuits, and a 12-gauge wire is used for 20-amp circuits. Going beyond those limits is not just bad practice, it's dangerous. Another factor to consider is voltage drop. When current flows through a long wire, the resistance of the wire causes a slight loss in voltage by the time the electricity reaches its destination. This is especially important in long cable runs or in systems where voltage must be tightly controlled, like in solar power installations or telecommunications. Thicker wires help reduce this voltage drop because they offer less resistance. So not only do you need to consider the amount of current, but also how far that current needs to travel. The longer the run, the thicker the wire often needs to be, even if the current isn't very high. Let's also touch on the type of metal used in wires. Copper is the most common material because it has excellent conductivity, but aluminum is also used, particularly for longer distances and higher voltage applications. However, aluminum has more resistance than copper, so aluminum wires need to be thicker to carry the same amount of current. This is another way current affects wire size, not just in terms of gauge, but also in terms of material choice. If you're using aluminum, you have to go even thicker to get the same performance you'd get from copper. Now, what happens if someone ignores these guidelines and uses a wire that's too small for the current it needs to carry? Best case scenario, the system becomes inefficient. You get voltage drops, 
devices might not perform properly and you lose energy as heat. But in the worst case scenario, you could end up with melted insulation, exposed wires, electrical shorts and fires. This is why building codes and regulations are so strict about wire sizing. Electricians use charts and calculators that factor in the current, length of the run, and even the ambient temperature to choose the right wire. Temperature is an interesting piece of this puzzle. When a wire heats up, its resistance actually increases, which causes even more heat to be generated. A dangerous cycle. In hot environments or in situations where wires are bundled together with little ventilation, it's essential to use a larger wire to compensate for the additional heat. Some installations even require using special heat-resistant insulation or derating the current capacity of the wire entirely. This shows just how dynamic and technical wire sizing can be when electric current is involved. And it's not just in homes and buildings. This concept plays a huge role in electronics, electric vehicles, industrial equipment, and renewable energy systems. For example, electric cars have to move large amounts of current from the battery to the motor very quickly. If the wires aren't properly sized, you lose performance and could damage components. Similarly, in a solar power system, wires connecting panels to the inverter and battery banks must be chosen very carefully. Undersized wires could waste precious solar energy as heat and reduce the system's overall efficiency. So how do professionals determine the correct wire size? It's not guesswork. They use tools like the NEC Ampacity Charts, which list how much current different wire gauges can carry safely under specific conditions. For instance, wires in conduit may heat up more than those in open air and might require derating. This is why wire sizing isn't something to take lightly. There's a lot of physics and practical knowledge that goes into doing it right. To sum it all up, electric current and wire size are two sides of the same coin. The more current you need to move, the thicker your wire needs to be. Using a wire that's too small isn't just inefficient. It can be downright dangerous. So whether you're wiring a light switch, setting up a server rack, or installing a solar panel array, always take the time to calculate the correct wire size. It could save you energy, money, and even lives. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.